surgical site infection. Surgical site infection is a real nightmare among the surgeons because we cannot answer the patients about the wound infection, especially for a patient who comes to us with a clean, clean case. So what is this clean case? Clean case examples are hernia surgery, thyroid surgery, breast surgery, all these are clean cases in which I am, there is no bacteria from the operative site. So, if at all there is some infection, it is purely because of you and the percentage of infection seen with or without antibiotics is less than 1 percentage only. So, the risk of infection in a clean surgery is less than 1 percentage. Clean contaminated surgery is, I, we are opening the cavity. We open the cavity. For example, I am going to do GJ, I am going to do GJ, I am opening stomach and jejunum. I am going to do appendicectomy, so I am cutting an appendix. So, these are all clean contaminated surgeries. I am opening a cavity which is uninfected, suprapubic catheter, that is also a clean contaminated surgery. So, contaminated surgery is a surgery in which the cavity opened by itself, I did not open it, opened by itself like a perforation, perforation from a duodenum, perforation from appendix. Open cardiac massage, last year question, open cardiac massage is a contaminated wound. Dirty wound is a obstructed bowel got perforated causing fecal contamination. So much of fecal contamination, so much of high volume bacteria, pus, abscess, everything will come under dirty wound. So without prophylactic antibiotics, please note it is 1 percentage for the clean wound and it is around 5 percentage for a clean contaminated wound and 10 to 20 percentage for contaminated wound, 20 to 40 percentage in a dirty wound. With a prophylactic antibiotic one hour before surgery, I have reduced the infection rate to 1, 3, 6 and 7 percentage. See the advantage of prophylactic antibiotic. Therefore, by giving a good prophylactic antibiotic, we can reduce the wound infection rate extraordinarily. Okay, you can see especially for a dirty wound which is having high risk of 20 to 40 percent infection, I have reduced it to less than 7 percentage rate of infection. That is advantage. So many scores are available for surgical site infection. First of all, please remember surgical site infection is an infection which happens up to 30 days or up to 1 year if I keep a implant or a mesh. Most common organism is Staph epidermidis, that is nothing but the open infection organism. The open organism on the skin is Staph epidermidis. If I open a cavity, in a cavity opened case, the common infection is E. coli. For example, if I did a laparotomy with the bowel opened, E. coli. Otherwise, for a hernia, thyroid, breast and all, you get Staph epidermidis. So, cavity opened case, you get E. coli. So, now whatever may be the infection, we can grade them by means of some scores known as Southampton and ASFG score. Southampton score grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 can be given by a mnemonic EI SPA. E for erythema, I for induration of the wound, S for serous discharge from the wound, P for pus and A for anatomical separation of the wound. Anatomical separation means burst abdomen, EI spa, anatomical break. So, the wound has opened up is called as anatomical separation. Asepsis score is given by the mnemonic, asepsis by Bailey itself. It is not a mnemonic made by me, it is from Bailey. So, A for additional treatment needed. For a patient, we needed to do an additional treatment like a wound debridement or cleaning of the wound. Serous discharge is coming, erythema is there, pus is coming, separation of the wound like breakdown of the wound. See very important here I does not stand for induration, it stands for isolation of a bacteria in a pus culture sensitivity, isolation of bacteria in a pus culture sensitivity and yes for stay more than 14 days because of the infection patient has to stay in the hospital for more than 14 days is called as yes. So now, surgical site infection comes to you on a fifth day usually with the help of clinical findings fever. Surgical site infection presents to you with the post-operative fever on fifth day. Fifth day fever is because of surgical site infection. Sixth day if there is a fever, it is burst abdomen, sudden burst abdomen which will come to you initially with a sudden gush of fluid called as salmon sign. When there is a sudden gush of fluid, you can understand the wound is about to open. And seventh day means there is an asthmatic leak, 
anastomotic leak is on seventh day. So the collection from the anastomotic leak will get in the pelvis or in the right posterior space called as Morrison's pouch. So in a, a sitting patient, it is in the pelvis. In a lying patient, it will be in the Morrison's pouch. Don't forget this. So the causes of postoperative fever depends upon the day. So day one fever is because of atelectasis. Day two is because of bladder catheter causing urinary tract infection. C is cannula based. D is DVT, 5 looks like yes, it is surgical site infection, 6 when you hit 6, crowd will burst, 7 you go to heaven when there is a anastomotic leak. So, do not forget the 7 causes of post-operative fever, post-operative fever, 7 days, 7 causes. So, one of the worst infections we see in surgical uh, ward is furnious gangrene and other necrotizing fasciitis. It is a necrotizing fasciitis, is an infection of subcutaneous and fascia okay it is not skin infection not a skin infection please remember this so necrotizing fasciitis is basically not a skin infection it is an inter infection going below the skin in the subcutaneous and the deeper fascias so it is most commonly polymicrobial such a necrotizing fasciitis of the scrotum is called as furnious gangrene of the abdominal wall as shown in the below picture is called as melanese gangrene so, the pathophysiology what happens? If this is a normal skin, this is a normal skin, the underlying tissues are becoming gangrenous, the blood flow which comes like this to the skin, no, they get damaged. So, that is called as subdermal vascular thrombosis, thrombosis of the subdermal vessels. Because of the subdermal vessels getting thrombosed, now which skin which is already normal now becomes gangrenous, that is the classical picture. So, therefore, if you see a gangrene in the skin like this, please remember in your mind, the gangrene below is going to be extensive. What you see superficially is a tip of an iceberg. Below that, if you go below this, the gangrene will extend up to this place. We have to debride everything like this. So, the most important key is debridement. So, debride the wound is the most important key to save the life of this patient. Debridement of wound is must you should do first look, second look, multiple times you deep bride until you get a clear cut granulation tissue. This can be diagnosed by a simple test. Make a small skin incision, put your finger, your finger goes very freely in the wound with a gloved finger. That is a simple test or else you can take a tissue biopsy. Tissue biopsy can be taken. That will show you vascular thrombosis. The interesting point in this furnious gangrene is following things are not affected. Test is not affected. Bladder is not in involved. Bladder will not go for necrosis. Bladder not affected. It will be affecting only the subcutaneous tissues and the overlying fascia and some part of the muscles. It will spare testis and bladder. But we will put catheter to prevent contamination while passing urine. Therefore, we have put a catheter here and the testis goes for shameful exposure. After debridement, testis will be remaining like a shameful exposure and we have to plan for Plastic surgery reconstruction after the patient recovers. So, plastic surgery reconstructions using flaps or graft, etc., will be done later. Will be done later. So, please don't forget necrotizing fasciitis is a favorite topic of uh, National Board examiners. I am seeing questions every year. So, please go through necrotizing fasciitis.